My name is Alex from the United Kingdom. Right now I'm a conceptual artist for the film and game industry. I journeyed to the Amazon in search of the sacred plant medicine ayahuasca. For the sake of some artistic inspiration, I discovered its existence through my interest into environmental concerns and with my readings into the nature of consciousness by such speakers as Terence McKenna, Alan Watts and Krishnamurti. Uh, needless to say, I got a little more than I bargained for, so in order to decode a lot of the information learned from my journey, I am creating an art project based upon the lessons learned from the plant teacher Ayahuasca. So this video is also to introduce a few of those lessons learned and to give a little testimonial to the last ayahuasca retreat I just arrived back from. Uh, that is the Tierra Vida in Bucalpa, Peru. So to reach Bacalpa, one flies from the capital Lima over the fantastic Andes Mountains, a dazzling display of earthly artwork that never ceases to amaze. Then, over the mountains, one flies over jungle for as far as the eye can see, until one eventually lands in Bacalpa. The Tierra Vida Ayahuasca Retreat lies around a 20 minute boat ride downriver from the main docks, just outside the bustle of the main town and into a deep nature environment. So for those who are unaware, ayahuasca is a very sacred medicine that has its roots in these very old Amazonian jungle tribes. It is an incredibly powerful psychedelic substance which grants the user the ability to look deep within their own mind to such a great extent not usually available to you. It is created via the mixing of two jungle plants in one drinkable brew, the first being the Banisteriopsis carpi vine which contains the Hamal alkaloids and the second being the Psychotria viridis or Trichrona leaves containing the very powerful N-dimethyltryptamine molecule or DMT, sometimes referred to as the spirit molecule. If orally ingested, DMT is broken down by gut enzymes and is not active, which is where the Hamala alkaloids from the Banisteriopsis carpi vine come in as they serve to inhibit these enzymes, thereby allowing DMT to become active and the extraordinary occurrence within the human mind can unfold. Our language has polluted the perception of these devices by brushing them under the umbrella of the term drugs, which as a word holds within it many undesirable preconceptions that are simply not true. Ayahuasca is not a drug in the Western sense. It is not a recreational substance one takes to score a great time on. There is a certain amount of dread involved in taking it, and that's not just because of the incredibly foul taste. Uh, the experience itself is quite an ordeal. Properly used, ayahuasca can open up parts of yourself not usually available to you. The ayahuasca seemed to access memories I had buried deep within me, and brought about other memories and experiences in new light. Uh, taking a substance like ayahuasca is like looking into the clearest mirror imaginable where you will gain a new perspective on life and see what you have never seen before, how you really are. These devices have also been labelled with the term hallucinogen, which is another rather misinformed term for the ayahuasca. A hallucination implies that with eyes open we perceive an object within our physical reality that is not actually there, so this is not correct and a common misconception. Yes, you do see and experience fantastic visions with eyes closed, but never imagine in objects within the real world. One instead comes to see external reality with increased perception, increased clarity, just as the ayahuasca allows one to see internal memories and experiences in new light as it will do also with the external reality. Psychedelic is a more fitting term for the ayahuasca, which translates to mind manifest, that which manifests within the mind. Professor Nicholas, who studied psilocybin, another DMT-containing substance, concluded that these substances created an increase in informational activity in those parts of the brain usually involved with consciousness. 
transfer. So what does this mean exactly? Uh, well, we can look at consciousness as the transfer of information via neurons in the brain. And these substances such as ayahuasca work by enabling patterns of information to flow through that are not usually permitted due to the uh, default constraints that usually operate within the human brain. Uh, imagine, for example, a, a bottleneck opening within the mind and suddenly being confronted with a full wave of unrestricted information. Uh, this is why it's possible to view information from an entirely different uh, perspective than you are used to and is probably what is referred to uh, when people mention the vague term uh, higher states of consciousness. These psychedelic agents are incredibly powerful tools and I would never advocate their use alone and unsupervised. This would be probably, and rightly so, why such similar substances as LSD and psilocybin mushroom gained such infamy in the late 60s due to their somewhat reckless recreational use. The whole point of an ayahuasca retreat like the Tierra Vida is to provide a safe and constructive environment for you to explore these psychedelic agents, where you're surrounded by professionals and native medicine workers, both with extensive knowledge in the use of ayahuasca. So you can explore the inner states of your own mind, safe in the knowledge that if it does take a turn for worse, you're surrounded by people who have been using this for countless generations. One of the great aspects of the Tierra Vida ayahuasca retreat is that they really involve you in the process of creating the brew itself. There is a something a little more satisfying drinking the ayahuasca after a day watching over the brew cook. Preparing the brew, first the Banisteriopsis vine needs to be stripped of its outer bark. We do this by bashing it with a big stick. This breaks it apart and the bark easily crumbles. We then strip down the broken up pieces into thin strips. And after a couple hours and many blisters later, we have a big pile of thinly stripped vine. We then go about picking the chacuna leaves from the chacuna trees that litter the land the Tierra Vida own. The leaf and the vine are then placed in a big witch's cauldron in repeating layers one on top of the other. This is to allow good mixing of the brew. Filling the cauldrons with water, we then begin the brewing process. Many places cook the brew for different amounts of time. The Tierra Vida cook their ayahuasca brew for around four days. So each day we need to chop a lot of wood to keep it going. And uh, well, I suck at chopping wood. Over the four days, the brew concentrates more and more. Two cauldrons become one, one cauldron becomes a small pot brewing in the kitchen until eventually you have a small amount of thick concentrated brew. So this is ayahuasca, the substance itself, a fantastic tool to better understand one's own mind. This is how we as a rational culture would understand it. But in its native jungle environment, ayahuasca has been steeped in traditional use for hundreds, perhaps even thousands of years by native Indians who, through taking ayahuasca, believe they are accessing a different plane of reality entirely, uh, the spirit world, so to speak. And it is through the traditional use of ayahuasca in ritual ceremony that we begin to delve into this from a more mystical point of view, and ayahuasca becomes no mere substance, but dare I say, a divine healing spirit. The translation of ayahuasca after all, being the vine of the souls. The participation of an ayahuasca experience takes place within a ceremonial scenario, typically held within a ceremonial house called a maloka. Initiated at night to facilitate and fully engage with the mystical visions one encounters with the ayahuasca. You'd arrive there and the maloka would be lit by candlelight. Mattresses circle the outer edges of the maloka with an altar in the middle. The altar housing various props that gets used throughout the ceremony for various ritual purposes. Incense, sage, flower water, and the ayahuasca itself. Ceremonies are conducted by an elder, or shaman as they are known, a person who has devoted their life to working with the ayahuasca. The shaman can access ancient songs of healing called ikaros, which they have learnt supposedly from these sacred plants themselves in order to heal people in the ceremony of multitudes of problems or to delve people deeper into the mystical experience. 
One of the items the shaman will use is Mopacho tobacco. The Mopacho supposedly acts as a kind of cleanser of bad spirits. Along with blowing the Mopacho smoke around the entire Maloka, the shaman will personally blow the smoke over those involved in the ceremony. The bottle of ayahuasca is then given to the shaman to bless, who sings a personal ikaros into it. Then the ayahuasca is given out to all the people taking part in the ceremony. The helpers usually only take a small amount in order to keep a foot in both worlds. Waiting in the darkness of the Maloka, I always begin to recognize the ayahuasca taken effect by the introduction of a kind of stillness of being, a shift of focus away from distracting thoughts and into a state of mind more in tune with the current living moment, an alignment into the psychedelic experience. The shaman begins to sing her ancient healing ikaros, learned from the ayahuasca. An inner world full of light begins to unfold in a way that can only be described as extraordinary. I find myself humbled at the majestic beauty of an inner world that appears more real than ordinary reality itself. An examination of our own ego that which we equate with being ourselves is commonly first on the agenda for explorers new to this, an examination of the condition in one has picked up throughout their lifetime. Religious, philosophical and political associations, fears, hopes, wants and desires, all the social conditioning you have received from culture. These will all be broken down in front of the psychedelic experience and you will for the first time see yourself behind all these layers of your attachments. As I said before, taking ayahuasca is like looking into the clearest mirror imaginable. The ayahuasca gets under all the wiring of the condition that created the ego you mistook as you. Knowing this, one then often proceeds to a purgative experience. All the negative emotional baggage you've unknowingly picked up here and there and held onto all these years is purged from your very being, shed like old skin. One delves deeper into the mystical experience, encountering visual representations of spirits that seemingly seek to teach and assist. One of the earliest experiences I have of this were of spirits contacting me, claiming to be the caretakers of my heart.
being told to take better care of my health and more in tune with the spiritual side. The message coming from a spirit that was the visual representation of a part of me. Another time I could sense a great ache in the lower part of my back. I saw myself day after day giving all my creative energy to another and it was taking its toll on me. The stress and workload of this was making my body ache under the pressure. I couldn't understand why I was doing this. Making money and working so hard to earn it and for what end? It just didn't seem to make any sense. I learned to adopt a lightness of being to leave behind the darkness of a lot of my early ayahuasca experiences. Only by developing a light state of mind with no attachments could I generate a kind of kingdom of heaven within. Another time my spirit seemed to embody many animals within the jungle environment, feeling the powerful muscles and coiling form of the snake, the sticking power of the lizard, the texture of its skin, the cool breeze amongst the feathers of a flying hawk. I was connected to all life around me in the jungle, and such life it was, I thought to myself. There is something very important about taking ayahuasca in a deep nature environment like this, and the Tierra Vida own a fair amount of jungle that's yet to be developed. It's especially important for those in cultures like mine, incredibly cut off from the natural world. We forget about the world from which we originate. Taking ayahuasca, the earth suddenly seems to be very much alive, not a set of outside resources for us to use or perhaps even exploit but a vital organism that we all are an intrinsic part of. Confronting the ayahuasca experience, you are drawn to address very fundamental questions about who you really are. During a particular ayahuasca ceremony, I was being confronted by spirits that seemed to be a visual representation of who I am. I didn't like the somewhat frightening and aggressive representation I was being shown. I tried to fight it, demanding to know who they were and trying to get away from it uh, and then being told to stop fighting them we are you they were reply. stop fighting against yourself i'm not completely convinced at this spirit dimension not at least in the conventional sense that term applies a kind of outside dimension akin to something like christianity's idea of heaven and hell no, I see the ayahuasca experience and these spiritual dimensions as a visual projection of your own mind about who you are. Through my experiences and hearing numerous accounts by other ayahuasca explorers, the experience it seems is entirely dependent on your state of mind. If you are surrounded by misery and addiction, then this will be reflected in this inner state to you. And contrarywise, if you have led a life true to yourself of light and love, then you experience a kind of kingdom of heaven within. There are patterns of familiarity, of course, from person to person, but on the whole it appears to be a deeply personal experience. However, if we do accept the native view of an actual parallel reality that we interface with during an ayahuasca experience, then I would think at the very least this reality would begin as one thing, then change as someone as the interfacer interjects their own self into whatever it is we may be dealing with here. There is a heavy theme of connectedness to all things, both for me and for many others when taking ayahuasca. The idea that all life originates from the same source, the Big Bang. As Alan Watts used to say, it's as though someone has taken a bottle of ink and smashed it, creating many patterns. The pattern is very dense in the middle, but gets more intricate the further out we move. We're those complicated little bits at the end, but still a part of the whole. The Tierra Vida is a smaller ayahuasca retreat compared to some of these rather excessive places that have sprung up alongside the ayahuasca boom. The owners being incredibly cool and down-to-earth people that haven't been engulfed by their own business. So you get a much more intimate experience and it really just felt like I was enjoying time with some old friends.
The Tierra Vida share the land with a local Shipibo family, natives intertwined with generations of ayahuasca use. They make various Shipibo arts and crafts inspired by the ayahuasca visions, and will even sew designs onto some of your existing clothes if you wish. They also offer to do non-permanent ink tattoos based upon the same designs. And then what else? You have other aspects at the Tierra Vida, such as yoga and the raw food vegan diet by their ever passionate vegan chef. In the daytime between ayahuasca ceremonies, I would spend most of my day sketching and writing about my various ayahuasca experiences, or listening to the ayahuasca experiences of others, or perhaps just relaxing in a hammock overlooking nature. There is a small neighbouring community in the area surrounding the Tierra Vida. Uh, one place even has a little pool. A little out of place, I thought, but I begrudgingly had to admit that it was a rather welcome addition in the humid jungle environment. And of course, you have the main town, a short boat ride away, to see the local scene, check up on internet, that sort of thing. It's rather jarring to be in this type of environment whilst working with the ayahuasca with its attempts at reintegration into the heart of nature. So it's often better to stay in the quieter environment of the Tierra Vida. The primary shaman they use here is called Olga, a wonderfully warm and friendly personality. There are apparently many different types of shaman, Olga being a healer, so is the perfect shaman for those seeking actual healing work rather than whatever it is I do, uh, consciousness exploration or something. Um, other than Olga, they also enlist the help of father-son shamanic duo Leonardo and Bima, who sing together in a great rhythmic blend of traditional Icaros and a whistling style I'm not familiar with. Uh, I went further than I'd ever been during that ceremony. I remember waking up on the floor of some celestial kingdom and being dragged back to reality by two figures. Uh, the next morning I find out that Leonardo and Bima were singing uh, a personal Icaros to me in order to anchor me as I was straying a bit too far on the other side than was perhaps recommended. I'm always surprised at how spiritual the experiences are myself. I never really thought of what I was doing as spiritual exploration. I'd always kept a bit of uh, distance and scepticism with it, only really doing it in order to create some beautiful artwork from, as one does see and experience many beautiful things with the ayahuasca. But it seemed after each ceremony I would have to ask myself, did that really all just happen to me, or was it part of some elaborate metaphorical fantasy which I'm not supposed to take literally, only extrapolate the messages behind it to apply it to my life? It's dangerous to lean too far in any one direction, but it seems the more I experience with this, the harder it is to ignore the feeling that the natives could possibly be right with this. I'd always grown up an atheist, and in as early as my second ceremony, I was being shown things, almost purposefully it seemed, to question that fundamental truth. Spirit dimensions, soul companions, divine intelligence, all things I would have declared absolutely barking mad and delusional just a couple of months prior. But after a direct experience, the, the universe appears not only stranger than I imagined, but stranger than my ability to ever imagine, it seems. But don't get me wrong, this is far removed from any orthodox religion. What somebody taps into with the ayahuasca is both far more spiritual than atheism would admit, and far, far more peculiar than religion would ever allow. Psychedelics allow the user to tap into that most sacred part of ourselves, without any intermediary religion or other authority, which is exactly as it should be. The spiritual state is within. It can't be given to you by any other outside source. So it really comes down to each individual to take this task upon themselves. I'm still fairly new to this, so I may just be completely wrong with this. I've searched many avenues of life for inspiration, and it seems what happens within the space of one's own mind during an ayahuasca experience is the most fascinating occurrence within the whole universe. And when I experienced it, I thought, this is it.